I'm a, I'm a person who I've lived with on and off with depression my entire life, and I I just didn't believe in self medication. You know, once I once I stopped doing drugs and alcohol, I realized I had been self medicating my entire life, and so now when I take different actions, I I just do what feels right. You know, and um, it doesn't mean that I'm immune, and it doesn't mean that it won't come back. But what I do know is that I have a support system, so that when I do start feeling those feelings of of not enoughness or I'm not good enough or I don't deserve to be happy or I should hurt myself. I tell people. I lost my job and I'd just gone through a breakup and my my brother had gotten put in jail after he tried to kill me and it, it's like that in and of itself is a very like long hard story like you know how my family has survived uh, you know drug and alcohol addiction and how it affects the whole family and I kind of you know I, I kind of had to go through a lot and I think that having you know I think really what it comes down to is a, and this I mean it's this it's very personal you never really think you're ever gonna have to testify in court against someone that you're kind of supposed to protect and being a twin is a really special bond and it's a special thing and you know I watched you know my brother be um, kind of just destroyed by drugs and alcohol abuse, um, you know, and, and his own disorders, and and uh, you know, and, and I feel very fortunate that I got sober and, and uh, I changed the way that I lived, and, I, and it's been a good. It's, I've been doing. It's been about. It's actually in a couple of days. It'll be seven years that I haven't had even had so much as a beer or uh, anything, any drug or any alcohol, and no weed, none of that stuff. But um, you know. After my brother had gotten arrested, my life kind of fell apart, and I was extremely uh, suicidal. I, I didn't really know what I was feeling. I didn't know I was depressed, because I have this very much like working class, just got to keep going, just got to keep pushing through it, and I, I didn't allow myself time to process. I didn't allow myself time to grieve, and I think everything hit me like a wave, and um, you know, when you stuff your feelings and you're they're, they're going to happen to you eventually. That's what I learned, and um, especially in trauma situations. And, um, you know, I just found myself uh, on a train platform, and I, like, I was ready to jump. You know, and I had laid my suit out um, for my mom to bury me in, and I didn't tell anybody what I was doing. And I, I had stopped going to therapy. I was, I'm a big advocate of, of therapy because I think it's important for people to get professional help to like talk about and address our feelings in a healthy environment when we haven't learned to, you know, as young adults or as children. Um, so we can kind of identify how we feel and then make choices. And I just stopped doing healthy things. And uh, I stopped doing the things that made me feel okay, like going to the gym and I gave up. And I didn't tell anybody and, you know, I. I went to go to the train, this train platform in, in uh, the Brooklyn Junction, and I was going to jump in front of a train, and the train was coming, and my phone, my cell phone rang, and I didn't recognize the number, and uh, you know I, I I've like worked in outreach programs and volunteered and stuff to like helping young people who have drug and alcohol addiction um, as well, and, and it just so happens at this moment I got a phone call and this kid was on the other line and he was crying. And, uh, and he was like, is this Tommy? And I said, yeah, but I'm like in the middle of something right now. And he said, I need help. And the train pulled into the station and I said, where are you? And uh, he told me and I went and I met him. And um, I became friends with that kid and he, he, he was a musician and he knew that I didn't do, I, I had previously had problems with drugs and alcohol. And he was uh, a pretty, pretty heavily addicted to drugs, and he had nobody to talk to. And uh, we would meet twice a week and just talk about stuff, and and we would get food. And you know, I, I think in helping him, it saved my life. You know, and I think that uh, suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And the problem is the the real true issue with people who are suffering. Um, the way that I was, and I think that I, my depression was circumstantial, you know, and I think that other people have chemical depression. I've, I've witnessed it, you know, and I think that, you know, we're suffering because depression creates a delusion that it's always going to be like this.
And when you feel despair on a 24 hour basis, you can't see the future, you can't see a, a light at the end of the tunnel. You know, and from someone who's gotten on the other side of it, if I could go back in time and talk to myself, you know, um, you know, I would tell myself that this is not going to last forever. And as shitty and as a, as painful as it feels, you just kind of have to, you know, when you're when you're walking through hell, you just have to keep on walking. And um, it's okay to ask for help. You know, that was a big thing. I think I I sank really hard. You know, I was very grateful that somebody reached out to me and asked me for help, um, and that I had the willingness to put put someone else ahead of myself. Um, because I was too proud to let people know how bad I was doing and how desperately I wanted to die. I was ashamed because I thought of myself as some somebody who was strong and, you know, I go on stage and I have this persona and I help people and I do stuff for a lot of people and, and I'm the one who everyone's supposed to depend on. Um, but I didn't have the humility in those hours and those moments and in those time and during that time in my life to, to to say hey i'm not okay and i need somebody to help me because i can't do this and you know i've seen i think that the lesson and the kid who called me the most powerful lesson in all of it was he taught me how the like he reminded me the gift of desperation he taught me the power it is it, there's strength and humility in asking for help like humility is not humiliation you know and it's saying that like okay like I you know the three most dangerous words that I can say is I got this you know and I've learned the six most important words I can say is I don't know and I need help You matter, you're needed, and you rock.